Hi, it's Amélie. Today we're going to practice Pavan by Fauré. Um, so it's a piece that was originally written for piano and um, but we know it um, as an orchestral piece as well because Fauré also made a version of that piece for uh, orchestra and uh, today we're going to play the flute part and there's also a piano part but I'm just going to work on the flute and if you have any question comments about the piece just leave them in the comment box and I'll answer them right away if there's other questions um, that are not related to that specific piece I'm going to answer them at the end so um, I'll just play the first phrase so some people see that piece as very slow some people say it should like Fauré meant it a bit faster around 100 on my part it's written 84 but I see andante molto moderato so andante would be slower than moderato but it's like it has to be in between I guess I'll try it at 92 for, to begin with I'll do the first phrase with the metronome try to put the metronome at every second beat so um, I was here so maybe 246 I'm gonna do the second phrase to be careful because it's all in the low register and it's it's piano you don't want it to go too low so maybe you check with your tuner to make sure you don't go too low I'm gonna play those two phrases and make sure okay, so I was just checking my when I tune I try to use not only the A because the A you know, it's a left hand note. I tried to do some E and D just to make sure I have notes with different tendencies and different registers as well. Okay. So I wasn't too low, but it's a good thing to check. Um, also, the second time, I don't know if you heard, I tried to change the color there. So maybe I'm going to try to do the first one more like um, luminous and the second one a bit darker. So um, like light here, I'll write dark. Then the third phrase, it's written un peu en dehors. Un peu en dehors means a little bit outside. So even though it's a piano, I would give that an intention of really being heard. And since it's the low register, I would just change it to a mezzo piano to make sure really it's not too, too soft. Okay, I'll do it uh, from there, from that C sharp. <laughs> I played it a bit 
louder. Second one, expressive, a little bit more. Um, and then when when you have the piano, I went back down and um, then crescendo, decrescendo and that trill. A good place to breathe would be before the triplet. You know, you have um, you have a trill, the bar before the trill, there's a triplet. Just before the triplet, it's a good place to breathe. Uh, like, yeah. Let's see the breathing from the beginning. So first phrase. So second, well, second bar of the flute, just before the last note, before the A, you could breathe there. And the same thing in the next one, next phrase, second bar of that phrase, just before the A, the last A, before the last note of the bar. And then... So, um, before the, the B sharp, I would breathe there. You see on that third, sen uh, third phrase, one, two, three, four, fifth bar of that phrase after the C sharp and be before the B sharp would be a good place. Okay, I think I'm gonna do that again from the beginning and I'll try to do those colors I talked about and um, breathe at the... I don't know if personally I need to breathe in those places, I'll see. Just saying also, um, if, if you think it, with the same tempo, but if you think it like this, I'll give you an example. You see, I, I kind of um, cut the phrase because I, I have all those beats that, that cut it. But if I do it, with the beats twice a bar instead of four times and I try to keep a line it's gonna be you see it's um, the phrase is more interesting like that <laughs> I hit my flute on the microphone a little bit, so it hurt. It dis <laughs> disturbed my sound. Okay, so now with all that in mind, uh, personally, you see, I don't breathe in the in some of the places that I suggested, but depending on your level and how long you can uh, breathe out, then maybe it's a it's a good idea to breathe in those spots. Is there something wrong? I'm not gonna breathe there and also I was thinking first time even though it's piano not too piano either because you want to be there controlling the air I just blow normally maybe uh, what could help you if you have trouble with that low C is to um, anticipate putting your pinky on on the key so you bring it a tiny bit faster you know you you prepare it because if, if you're just a bit late it might not be a problem of air it might just be that I tend to focus on my pinky moving and I don't put as much effort on my 
other fingers like my my mental energy goes to my pinky more than anything else and uh, maybe what could help also would be um, to use um, just sing in it sing in your flute while you play that and um, yeah try that try doing <laughs> And then and um, maybe if you have a problem with it you might just stop blowing which would be a problem another problem that could occur is maybe you're doing some type of movement that is disturbing your embouchure or your or your blowing um, so try that and then write back so I did, just before I answered that question, I did the first two, two phrases, which is really the same thing repeated. And I was quite happy with the, the color because I changed the color there and the second time was darker. And I was like, oh, I, I did it the way I wanted to. So now I'm going to go from the third sentence as if I didn't stop, you know. <laughs> not too bad maybe I would have done that decrescendo on the G sharp and the the triplet a bit more but yeah I'm gonna continue anyways so now uh, it's more in the high register also just you see when you have the piano es expressive which is espressivo like expressive remember that we tend to think that when things are loud, they're intense and um, that when it's soft, it's not important, but really um, it's not <laughs> because you don't, uh, you don't shout that you love people, you know, you, you, you uh, say it softly. So we usually say very important things softly and we should treat that little phrase as something intense and something maybe intimate but still with the with the expressivity and all that stuff and we don't have to play loud to make things expressive that's what i want to say so okay so now i'm gonna play that phrase that starts on a c sharp so i want to have a good attack so i'm gonna put my tongue there and release it just when the air comes in on that high c and I'm gonna make the note resonate in my head to have some nice color. Now I'm just looking for the color that I want. I'm gonna sing it, sing in my flute. that last C sharp you really have to bring like, make sure that it doesn't go down all those long phrases make sure that the the pitch doesn't go down at the very end keep it and you might have to um, direct the air a bit higher at the end so that the pitch doesn't go down I'll go back from there I was happy with the second time after I sang I thought the sound was better
I'll stop and talk a little bit. Um, okay. So, um, when I started, I was a bit tense and I thought, okay, I'll just pull my back back and I, I will bring my shoulder blades together and have a better posture and it's going to help everything. And it did. So I played. And then... I try to do a pianissimo and a crescendo di crescendo and then you get in the part where you have accents so you have to give a little bit of air on those notes like if I just blow it so you hear there's more air on those notes there's tongue but there's also air that is um, sustaining you know that tongue uh, when you have the, those longer notes there I think it's an accompaniment Let's see in the piano part. I don't have bar numbers. Okay. Okay, so when you go when you do the piano goes I'll just uh, can I play it? Yeah. Yeah. I'll just play it. So together at the beginning the tamba the piano does it with the flute so so when it goes the piano you do it once it and when it goes Bum, ba, da, da, da. The piano goes tum pa da 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 di da 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 So I was doing the melody of the piano with what the flute does. I think we're the counterpart of that piano part there. That's how I would play it. So I would still, I, I would be there and present, but maybe I wouldn't vibrate too much and I would keep it, I'll try it like that. So I'll go from bum ba da 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 da. Okay, so I'm just trying to open my D because I want to open sound. So it's just opening in the back of my mouth, trying to make everything open and with good support. So. part there's a there's a staccato but I don't think we should see it as a staccato like you have in Mozart or um, it's just you you should just not make do that D too long and then take a breath just after maybe which would be a good place for it but no need to uh, you know it's it doesn't mean to play it like this you know because it then it would it's the end of a phrase so I wouldn't Take care of that accent. Um, I didn't talk about places to breathe there, but usually um, with that rhythm, da, 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 so you would breathe when you have a long note. You breathe during that long note, 
and then the short note that goes to the next one, you don't breathe between those two, so it goes ta da 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 da. Those types of places you can choose, where with your own um, way of doing things, you know how long you can blow out and all those things. You can choose your best spots, and also when you go tam tam da 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 before all those different um, motives. That's a good place. When you have a tiny rest, it's a good place. Okay. Uh, where was I? I'll go from the bum ba da 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 that starts on a C. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's natural. I'm trying to bit to go to better to do it a bit more loud because it's fortissimo. I'm at the B flat. Then you go back to the first theme, but instead of doing it in F sharp, you do it in C sharp. And there too, maybe a tuner would be a good idea because C sharp is a high note. You might have to put it down a little bit, bring it down a little bit, and also um, give it a little bit of timber because sometimes sometimes it can be a note that sounds empty a little bit. You want a good legato, you have to always, always sustain the air. change okay so i think i'm gonna breathe somewhere i don't know if i want to breathe between those two notes i'll check i don't have a lot of time so i'm gonna breathe before the triplet you know when you have a dotted half note that's a g sharp i'm gonna breathe just after that, before the triplet that starts, F sharp, G sharp, F sharp. So I'm going to do that whole phrase again from the C sharp. Hmm. The, bre the breathing is at the right spot, I just didn't do it the right way. Crescendo. You heard here the A, and just before I, bre I took the uh, breath, uh, the pitch went down a little bit. I'm going to do it from the same spot as before.
see the sforzando, so hey, I try to, but not too much either, because you don't want to, you know, but yeah, give it a little something. I wonder what the piano is doing there. Okay, so it goes. Chromaticism. Okay. So the harmony there is interesting and there's chromaticism. So yeah, you want to give the ton, but something more mysterious than than uh, percussive, I, I guess, you know? And the so I'll do one bar before the sforzando. You have to never forget to blow the air because when you have a very long note like that it's easy to let it go flat and and just stop holding it but you have to always be there and holding the note that's why this piece is a good piece to practice with a tuner to make sure you don't let stuff go down and also well the tuner will tell you you're going too low and then you're going to have to use your abdominals to push the air a bit faster and um, bring back the bring back the um, intonation in the right spot. So I'm going to continue. So just um, at the last one, you know, before the G sharp, you have F sharp and then da, da, da. so that's a good spot to take a breath. And then when you have the two G sharps that are repeated, I took a breath there in between. For the F sharp that goes with it you can try it with that fingering here with the middle finger here instead of this one because when you do a um, high F sharp piano it's a bit easier with that fingering when it's piano especially so that could help yeah 
Yeah, it's way easier. So try with that fingering. It's going to be helpful. So I think that's it for that piece. I don't know. Is there any, uh, are there any questions about it? No, just that one question at the beginning. Okay. Um, no, that's about it. There's and no other questions about the North Canyon. They were all just loving how you played. Oh, that's great. Thanks. Um, so so, well, I hope this was helpful. If you have any question or comment, just leave them in the box below. And uh, if you like the video, please like it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and see you next time.